Okay. Welcome everybody um, to our number seven of Let's Talk About Seminars with the Circle of Wine Writers. And this week our speaker is Jerome Billard from Domaine de la Noble in Chinon. Before I hand over to Jim Budd, who's Circle member who's kindly set up this seminar for us today, as a couple of few housekeeping points, just to let you all know that the meeting is being recorded. Um, you are all on mute, but we do welcome questions and we will put those uh, to Jerome at the end uh, of the, of the uh, presentation. So uh, before any further ado, I will now hand over to Jim. Right, am I I'm on, yeah? Yep. <clears throat> well, firstly to everybody, welcome to welcome to the Loire Valley. Um, I'm talking to you in the in I'm in the Cher Valley at the moment, about 40 kilometers east of Tours. And Jerome, who's going very kindly be going to be doing the seminar today, is about 80k from here, 50 mile, 50, 50 k southwest of Tours. So, as you can see, that in France we take social distancing very seriously. <laughs> <clears throat> I'd like to extend a special welcome uh, to John David Hedrick, who is <clears throat> Jerome's long term US importer, and he's got up especially to <clears throat> watch this seminar at 6 30 in the morning with him and also Jason Wilson, who's an American wine writer. Um, I first met Jerome in 2003, I think it was probably June 2003, um, which was when he, re he returned to take over Domaine de la Noble. Um, he'd been away doing his, his studies. Um, his studies included a stage at, uh, at Petrus, and then he worked at Dominus in California and then worked in New Zealand, both in central Otago and in Hawke's Bay. So you can see that already he had a very distinguished <coughs> CV. I was immediately very impressed with Jerome and have followed him, him ever since. Um, he took over from his father, <coughs> Francois and, and Madeleine, and perhaps it wouldn't be, it's not unfair to say that his father <laughs> looked after the domain which expanded during their, their time, um, but it was part-time part because he was a distinguished teacher of enology at the, the nearby wine school in, <clears throat> in Montreal Ballet. Since Jerome's arrival in 2003, um, he's really moved the, the domain up a number, a number of steps. It's now, I think it's one of the top domains in Chino, and indeed, um, Jerome is one of, for me, one of the best uh, producers of Cabernet Franc in the, in the Loire. I'd say also Chenin Blanc, his Chenins are, are very, very good, but the, the production of Chenin Blanc is, is much smaller. He started, when he started it back in 2003, uh, the conditions were very cramped. The wine was sort of made around in cellars under, underneath the house and out in the courtyard. Um, and then later on, he's built his own <coughs> gravity, gravity winery. Um, to say, I've, I've said that he's very much top domain. <coughs> and it's finally, I don't just take my word from it, but if you look at the people who import and sell um, Jerome's wines in the UK, um, I'll just pick out four, four of them. Hayes, Hansen and Clark, Leon Wheeler, The Sampler and The Wine Society. So that mm. shows the quality of his wines. And I'll now hand over to, to Jerome. Yes. Hello. Yes, we can see you. Yeah, you ah, okay, good. Um, so nice to, to welcome you here in, uh, in La Noble. Um, I'm uh, really, really happy that uh, Jim proposed me to that uh, seminar. It's, uh, it's a new thing for me and I guess for, uh, 
most of you, uh, but it's, uh, it seems to be the, the new fashion of uh, presenting an estate, so that's great. Um, so as Jim said, uh, it's already now uh, 17 years I'm uh, there and I, that I manage uh, the estate of La Noble. Uh, and I, uh, uh, when I were a teenager, I, I wasn't, uh, for sure, I wasn't uh, going to be a, a winemaker, but uh, uh, finally the, the history made, made something else. Uh, and I, uh, I get the passion of wine when I were about uh, 19 years old, but uh, I had to, to go further to, to see several regions in Burgundy, in, uh, in Bordeaux, California, and New Zealand to, to recognize that uh, here uh, we have a, a very lucky place uh, with uh, plenty of different soils and different terroirs, and uh, that the Chinon wine AOC um, must represent in the future a, a very, very important value of the of the wine world. Um, so already seven year, uh, 17 years. So I will not be able to to explain you all what we have done there. But uh, I will try um, to. I, I would like, if it's okay, Jim, to to start with a presentation of uh, the AOC of Chinon. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then to do a focus uh, here in La Noble. Sure. Yeah. A brief, brief, brief introduction to Chino, and then then on to the La Noble. Okay. So I I think uh, the best introduction is uh, uh, you, you can see the, the 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 landscape. Yes, we can. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. okay. Um, so uh, it's. Here in the middle, you can see the, the Loire River, uh, uh, not, sorry, the Vienne River, which is uh, the, uh, the river that come into the Loire uh, a few 20 kilometers away uh, in the west. Uh, so here we are facing uh, the east side uh, of the Appellation. Um, so you can see uh, in the middle of the valley, it's uh, mostly gravel and sandy soil, um, and uh, on the two borders, uh, on the two sides of each part of, of the river, this is limestone. Uh, and the third uh, soil of, uh, of Chinon is um, on top of the, of the plateau, on the two sides of, uh, of the river. Um, so uh, Chinon, it's uh, 2,400 hectares. Uh, that are uh, all around the all around the, the river uh, La Vienne. Uh, it's mostly planted with Cabernet Franc, um, as there is a, another uh, grape variety which is Chenin Blanc, uh, but that represents only 80% on the 2,400 hectares. Um, so coming now in La Noble. Uh, you can see we are quite up uh, from the riverbed, and all the soil from La Noble are uh, on the hillside or on the plateau uh, just behind there. But I will not be able to show you, but it's it's behind. Uh, unfortunately, I can't go there with uh, the Wi-Fi, uh, but. Um, uh, I'm happy you can see some uh, some of the vineyard now. Um, so here in La Noble, we are lucky because uh, we always had the tradition of uh, of raising uh, Chenin Blanc, which is really really where I explained you uh, previously in uh, in Chinon. Uh, and now we have six hectares of it and 22 hectares of Cabernet Franc. Uh, so I will show you uh, a map, uh, and I will try to to show you with my finger um, the 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 block that we are you have you have in front of you right now. So let's try to to see the the whole vineyard. So um, 
it's uh, upside and down, but um, the we are actually I'm right there here, uh, right uh, yeah right there, and uh, we were you you have seen that block here here, right? Um, so you can see we are La Noble. It's a very uh, interesting vineyard because we have all our vineyard uh, surrounded by bushes all around, uh, and we have uh, the the Wool Valley here uh, with lots of different kind of soils. Uh, also here, les Blancs Manteaux, it's uh, limestone, and the plateau up there here, it's uh, clay soil. So I will show you. Um, I bring some samples of soil to be able to to show you the the two main soils. But you have to understand that uh, here, as you can see, the slope. Um, it's not really impressive with the camera, but you have a nice slope here, and um, uh, you can you have uh, lots of uh, of um, layers of different soils. Um, I will show you some um, some uh, the main the main soils. So we will start with uh, the limestone. Uh, so I bring some uh, some fossils here. Uh, you can see this is shells. So you have to imagine that uh, uh, a few millenniums uh, millenniums ago you had some uh, a, a nice sea with uh, with lots of corals and uh, and uh, shells. Uh, this is the limestone. This is the, the white gold of the area, uh, where you can dig some caves. And uh, this is really the most important part of uh, of um, of the great terroir from Chinon. Um, a little bit uh, on top of um, of the of the limestone. Uh, just before the plateau, you can find this kind of clay, which are really, really hard clays um, that make much more, much more body uh, for, for, for the Cabernet Franc. And the third part, uh, the second, another uh, uh, soil is the plateau of clay that you can see here. This is white clay, and you can see it's uh, it's a dust. It's like a baby bump. Uh, it's very soft when you have it on a, on your skin. Um, voila. Uh, so like that, you can understand the the, the, the soil of Chinon. Um, we can see the the AOC here, and uh, La Noble. It's right there. And the castle of Chinon and the town of Chinon is right there. Uh, so, um, uh, what uh, can I uh, show you more? Uh, uh, I have a problem, no? No, I can hear you fine. Sorry? I can hear you. Yeah, okay, sorry, I, I, I thought there were a problem, sorry. Um, so, uh, all our uh, vineyard here in La Noble, uh, we work organically. Uh, uh, the aim, my aim here in, um, in the estate is really uh, to be focused on, uh, on uh, each uh, expression of uh, the Cabernet Franc and uh, and uh, Chenin Blanc. So my aim here is really um, to be able to uh, to catch uh, the expression of each part of the soil. So in that way, we are. Uh, you you have seen uh, uh, the map of the vineyard. Uh, we are really really focused on each each uh, little part of block um, because. Uh, you can easily understand that uh, uh, in the middle of um, of uh, of the slope uh, here, or uh, 
in the bottom of the hillside, you have not the same uh, watering, you do not have the same nutri nutrients for, for the vineyard, uh, and that makes a, a huge, huge difference. Um, so I'm really trying to separate uh, each part of, uh, of the vineyard to, to, to get the expression of the, um, also because we only have one single grape, uh, Cabernet Franc, or one single grape, uh, Chenin Blanc, for, uh, for the white. Uh, so this is really, really my aim is, uh, is there. Uh, so uh, the work organically, we, uh, to work organically, we, we start in 2008, uh, and the wool vineyard was where uh, organic in 2011. Uh, now, um, this is, even more important because uh, you can see uh, that uh, uh, we are trying to do some um, some work in the middle of the row. Uh, uh, we are seeding some cover crops, uh, different space, uh, uh, varieties of cover crop um, in uh, in function of uh, of, uh, of the soils. Um, so everything is turned. Uh, in the way to to get the best expression of uh, of each part of soil, and my wool range uh, were built around that. All right. Um, so uh, we can't go inside the vineyard, but uh, I carry with me some uh, some. Um, a wool cluster, uh, a wool uh, uh, grape, uh, and I don't know if you can see, uh, it's all flowering here. Yeah, I can see the flowers. Yeah. Yeah. And can you smell it? Uh, just about, very faint. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, so it's, um, uh, to, to make a focus in 2020, uh, we had a very, um, uh, very hot uh, forecast during uh, winter time, and uh, that followed during springtime. Uh, now we have about, we are the 22 of, um, of May, uh, and we have already two, three weeks uh, earlier than a, a, pre, a very early uh, vintage. Mm -hmm. So um, the wool vineyard is uh, flowering right now. Um, and for me, it's, uh, it's really uh, a new thing. Uh, so we it's are, uh, sorry. It's a new thing because it's so early. Yes, yes, yes. We have, uh, it's, um, if it's uh, still like that, uh, I guess we, we can start uh, picking uh, around the, the very beginning of September, even uh, for the Cabernet Franc, where you can, uh, you have to wait uh, between the floration, the, the flowering and, uh, and uh, the picking, you have about uh, 100, 110 days. Uh, before the maturity. So um, I think we will be picking very early this year. Uh, normally, a normal year here in Chinon is about uh, uh, the really beginning of October for the Cabernet Franc. Uh, so it must be already one month earlier this year, uh, especially also because uh, the maturation um, of the of the sugar and the phenolic compounds will not be the same um, if it's uh, if the maturation is going during the the months of August or during of September because of the um, of the time of sun every day and uh, and the and the, the temperature. Um, so of course this year. Uh, must be much more difficult to to be able to to do some uh, some rosé, I guess, uh, as we are looking 
for more uh, acidity and freshness on that kind of uh, of um, of wine. Um, of course, uh, once again, because we are really looking after our soils and our uh, our vineyard, um, you have to understand that here we we pick everything by hand uh, because we are able to do some uh, some uh, rosé here with the the part of uh, of uh, that part of the vineyard uh, where you have much more watering uh, also here. Um, and we we keep the rest of the blocks up there on the top of the hillside for the red. Uh, that's why it's really important for me to pick all the, the Cabernet Franc and the Chenin by hand. Uh, we are able to, to pick wool clusters and to carry it uh, directly there. I will try to show you a little bit the, the winery. Uh, let me know if there is a problem of a uh, Wi-Fi. Um, so you can see perhaps a little bit the winery there, uh, which is a winery all by gravity. Do you hear me, uh, Jim? Yeah, I can see. Yeah. It's, yeah, you it's can see. Just, it's on the extreme left-hand side, the white bit yeah. through the trees. Exactly. And uh, you can see here, this is the entry uh, for the for the white and rosé, really on top of the vineyard uh, of, of the press, um, and you have another entry there for the red with the the sorting table and uh, the disclaimer, and you have caves down there, 400 meters caves. Uh, so. It's, uh, for me, it's really, really important to be able to carry um, the wood clusters and not to damage uh, the, um, all, the, all the, the berries. As uh, for me, Cabernet Franc, um, for lots of people, Cabernet Franc is a very uh, rough grape variety. Uh, in my opinion, it's a very uh, sensitive berry. And if you crush it, if you damage it, uh, you, you, you are sure you will get some, uh, some, um, some veggie flavors, uh, some um, Thai tannins, uh, which is for me very, really uh, the thing I, I, I ate in, uh, in, uh, in, our, in our wines. Um, I have to... Oh, sorry, I fall down. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> you didn't have to you like So, I, yeah, 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 I'm okay, sorry. <laughs> um, so, I don't know, um, I have no idea of, uh, of the time I already take for... Uh, for the pre presentation of the vineyard. Um, you want to move fun. into? Do you want to move into the cellar? Uh, it's uh, it's as you want. Let me know. Should we ask for questions? It's twenty five minutes that we've been going, so we can ask for some questions to come through. Okay. Do you like to 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 ask question about the vineyard uh, directly there in, in the vineyard, or uh, we go in the cellar? Jim, what do you say? <laughs> why, why don't you ask the questions while Jerome's making his way into the cellar? Okay. Does anybody have any questions, please? There's nothing on there at the moment. I guess uh, John David is not really uh, awake right now, so no question for him. He's busy drinking his coffee. <laughs> So right now we we will enter into the cave. Connection. We are. 
be cracking up. Oh, we lost him. Come back, Jerome. We've got a question. Yeah. Jim? Yeah. Yes. You're back now. Yeah. yeah, we can hear you. No? Yeah, don't go foot too far into the cave. Yes, no, but now uh, it's uh, because there is another uh, hotspot uh, Wi Fi. So okay. now it's it's right there. I I set up that for you. So okay. Uh, and the whole, yeah, question from Chris Kissack as well. We've got John. Yeah. Uh, John David has got a quick question, so I'll just unmute him for you. Yeah. Hey, Jerome. Hey, Jerome. Yeah, I'm just I'm just curious if you could just talk very briefly about the how if at all, how the average harvest date has changed in the last 17 years since, since you started. Are, are growers harvesting later in general? Um, is, is, are you seeing a trend toward slightly riper wines that's, that's been affected by what the market wants? Can you just talk about that a little bit? Yes, um, so, uh, yeah, it's true that when I came back from uh, uh, California and New Zealand, um, I was uh, I were quite surprised about uh, the the tannins and the structure of uh, of uh, the Cabernet Franc here in uh, in the Loire Valley, and um, I put all my focus on uh, uh, trying to pull out all this uh, this um, uh, veggie flavors and veggie tannins. Um, uh, so uh, I, I were also really, really lucky as um, the, the forecast have changed a lot uh, in the past years. Um, you have to understand that when I came back here in, uh, in La Noble uh, in 2003, that were a very, very hot uh, summertime. Uh, and my father told me, hey, Jerome, uh, let's really uh, um, enjoy that vintage. You will never uh, have um, such maturities uh, in the future. Uh, and it's true that we can really see that uh, now we, we have um, the average alcohol content in our wine is 13 degree alcohol. Um, there is no more chaptalization. Uh, everybody is, uh, is really um, trying now to get uh, uh, the right maturity between the, the tannins, the phenolic compounds, and the, the, the level of sugar. Um, so, and to be honest, right now I'm talking with uh, friends from uh, south of France and Bordeaux. Um, because I'm, um, I'm afraid uh, this year in 2020 not to be able to, um, to get uh, maturities with uh, uh, the right compound, uh, the right flavors uh, and no, no, um, not too much sugar. Is that, uh, is that uh, what you want me to explain, Gilly? Did he? Yeah, that, 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 that's good. That's good. Thank you, Jerome. And now, Jerome, we have Chris Kissack would like to um, ask a question. Over to you, Chris. Hi, Jerome. Hi, Chris. Hi, Jerome. Um, there's been quite a few frosts in the Loire over the past few years. Can you tell us, firstly, uh, did you have any frost in 2020? And secondly, can you talk a little bit about how you change your pruning to try and cope with frost these days? Yeah, of course. Um, 
Uh, also, one thing that my uh, father told me when I took over is that here in La Noble, we never get any, any frost, uh, any uh, uh, huge frost, uh, as we are a little bit up uh, to the valley and uh, we, we, are, we do not have often some, uh, some damage with, uh, with that. Uh, but it's true that in 2016-17, uh, uh, 16, 17, uh, 16 was, were terrible. Uh, for uh, the Chinon wine AOC. Um, not too much for me, but 17 were terrible too. Uh, not so much for the Chinon AOC, but more for La Noble at that time. Uh, but it's true that as we get more and more hot winters, um, we, we, we are much more sensitive to, to frost as the buds uh, start to grow, to raise uh, much earlier than in the past. Um, so you have to imagine, uh, to, to understand that uh, until 2011, the average uh, yield of the wool Chinon wine AOC were about 50 hectoliters per hectare. Uh, and since 2012 to now, the average is around 37. Uh, yes, 37 yeah. uh, hectoliter per hectare. So that makes a huge, huge difference. Um, so uh, in my opinion, it's important to, to, to move and to adapt our work. Uh, so uh, it's true we already had uh, the discussion about, but uh, now we start pruning the later as we can, uh, really depend of uh, of, uh, of the team I have uh, to, to, to do the pruning. Uh, but we, this year we start pruning uh, the 10th of January. Uh, and uh, I'm not afraid now to stop pruning. So we start pruning uh, on top of vineyards, um, blocks that are, have almost no, no risk of frost. Um, and we finish, uh, we always finish now with, uh, with terroir that are uh, a little bit below uh, with a little bit more moisture. Um, so I'm not afraid to stop pruning during two, three weeks and restart to finish uh, uh, with the five, six last hectares. And it's true that uh, uh, since 2000 and 18 that we are doing that, uh, it makes a huge difference for me as uh, uh, sometimes uh, you get some frost. Uh, so in 2018, we get some frost for my uh, 39th birthday, uh, the 4th of uh, April, uh, we get a minus four. Uh, and so we get some damage, but uh, Finally, not so much as uh, the last six sectors that we, we print uh, were even not really, um, uh, the debating were uh, not really uh, at that stage uh, at, at that time. So we, we get some, some frost, but really not, uh, not uh, a dramatic one. Jared, so just just checking, the, the, four, the frost of the 4th of April was 2019, wasn't it? 19, yes, yes, 39, yes. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> 19. Yeah, thank you, Jim. <laughs> the, the, other, the good news is that there hasn't been any serious damage, frost damage this year. No, 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 no. We, so we were... Sorry? It, it's true for Chino, but there hasn't been any damage right the way through the Loire, as far as I know. No, 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 no. Yeah, there were a, a few days uh, with uh, uh, low temperature, but uh, that stay at a very uh, minus one degree Celsius, minus two, um, so no, no real damage, um, which is, 
quite surprising as uh, the deepening uh, really early. Really early. Does anybody else have any other questions for Jerome? I think you wanted to finish off with a tasting, didn't you, Jerome? Or was that? Yes. Yes. Perhaps. perhaps. <laughs> for me. I think, I, think uh, uh, I, I will try to try to put my uh, my, uh, my, post. my post. Let me know if there is a problem. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah? Yes. Oui. So, uh, I think we can have a, a quick testing. Perhaps we can... Uh, uh, so, I explain you uh, all my range is done with, uh, with uh, different parts of the vineyard, uh, but the most representative bottle uh, is uh, uh, Le Temps des Cerises. You can see mm. it's uh, yeah. it's uh, yeah. uh, this is uh, a cuvee that I do with uh, the whole vineyard minus the rosé uh, and minus a, a little um, cuvee of uh, of bubbly. Uh, so this is um, a blend of young vines, old vines. Uh, this is also a blend of limestone and clay stones, uh, but here on that cuvee, uh, to be honest, it's perhaps not the, the best balance between soils and, um, and, uh, and trees and vine trees. Uh, but uh, so the aim on that cuvee is really to, to, to get the fruits uh, and lots of, uh, of um, easiness. Uh, a quick pleasure. So, um, do you want me to present the other uh, cuvee or? Yeah, that would be good. Be good? The other cuvees, yeah. Yeah. So, you have uh, um, uh, two selections. Uh, which are les blancs manteaux here, mm -hmm. and another one, les chiens chiens. So these, these two cuvées are single vineyard. Um, it's, uh, it's two different soils. Les blancs manteaux, it's pure limestone. It's uh, an inside of pure limestone. And les chiens chiens, it's uh, the block of, uh, of uh, clay soils on top of, uh, of the plateau. Uh, this is the third uh, clay, the white clay I showed you uh, previously. Um, so those two cuvées, it's uh, very old vines. Uh, I will uh, to uh, you have a really interesting balance between the soil and uh, the vine trees. Uh, and so, to be honest, it's perhaps. Uh, those kind of blocks where you have uh, the less work to do during the season as uh, you have no second crop, you have no uh, big delivering or things like that to do. Um, so this is uh, actually we are presenting uh, 18 Les Blancs Manteaux and Les Chiens Chiens as we just bottled it um, uh, two months ago after uh, one year of uh, aging in, uh, in big barrels in two natural caves like that. And uh, the last cuvee that uh, I can present you is Pierre de Tuf. Pierre de Tuf, it's, um, it's a cuvee that we do, I will show you, actually I, I must be able to show you that. Um, this is uh, a cuvee that we, we do right there in that old block. You can, I can present you right now Pierre de Tuf. Uh, it's 
so this is a, a, a VAT from about the 15th, 17th century. So it's directly dug into the rock. Uh, don't know if you can see the. So yeah. it's a very impressive uh, vat when it's fermenting, when it's uh, completely full. And this is the only cuvee I'm still uh, doing uh, right there. All the rest of uh, of the estate, uh, the vinification is done in. Uh, in the, the cellar, the wine cellar down there. This is pictures of, uh, of, the, um, of the racking with the mar, and this is a picture of, uh, of putting down of that cuvee. So, and uh, here in the cave, you have here, 2019, so you can see the, the malolactic fermentation uh, must be done during a few months or weeks, I don't know, depend of the, of the temperature. And here you have 2018. So, uh, so this is a, the four cuvee of, uh, of red wine we have. Uh, do you want me to, to present you the, the two cuvee of uh, white? So, or we yeah. test uh, some uh, Pierre de Tuf 18 directly into the barrel? I, th I think I'd show, show, just present the two, the two Shannons. Yes, right. Up -a up where are they up so we have a first cuvee which is chantelevent chantelevent so this is a cuvee of chenin it's a, a, a blend of different blocks of uh, of chenin different blocks it's uh, it's limestone salt of course uh, it's picking uh, two passes um, on the last vintages we had to to pick really early that cuvee as um, it were uh, very very mature uh, maturity comes very high um, so this is a cuvee that uh, I'm doing an aging only in a stainless steel vat on the lees to get the more minerality, the more freshness. And I have another cuvee, which is uh, La Part des Anges, right there, which is a cuvee we do with um, old vines, very old vines, and the juice are going directly from the press, directly into barrel, uh, food and um, and um, emperor uh, for at least one year, 14, 14 months uh, with a very, very slow fermentation. Chenin is really able to, to have a very, very uh, slow fermentation. Uh, and it's interesting to, to get more complexity on, uh, on, uh, on that kind of cuvee. And so it's bottled uh, 24 months after that. And it's indigenous yeasts? Yes, of course, of course. I didn't explain that, but uh, also for the reds, uh, it's uh, uh, natural yeast uh, as soon as there is no uh, off flavors starting uh, coming through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also we have some, uh, some rosé here, which is a pure Cabernet Franc uh, from a bottom of hillside. And some honey, <laughs> but uh, that's not your... Uh... <laughs> so. 
especially your test. Yeah. Should we should we ask for ask for any questions now? Any further questions? I'm not sure there are at the moment. So, uh, do you like to? Uh, sorry, I was a bit slow on typing. Can I ask a question? Oh yes, there's Lynn Greer. No. It's actually Jeff. I'm just on my. Sorry, Jeff. <laughs> I didn't. Mean that. <laughs> Uh, Jerome, um, thank you very much. I, I just have a couple of winemaking questions. Uh, you spoke about the, the skin being sensitive and you, you spoke about uh, berry sorting and so on. Do you ferment uh, whole berries or do you use any whole bunch or do you, yeast, do you, do you crush any of the berries at all? And uh, if you could just go through your, your uh, treatment of the grapes when they come in and as they go into fermentation. And then also, uh, in a hot year, is it possible that your acidity could be on the low side and that you might need to add some? If so, would you add some? And, uh, and then on the barrel side, if you could just uh, talk about age of oak and uh, size of barrel. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, for, for me, really, um, uh, I'm really looking, uh, you know, uh, I, I, I I did a degree of uh, enology, uh, so I'm enologist, and I learned all the wine making process to to uh, to uh, to uh, uh, increase the quality of a uh, of a wine. Um, but here in Lanoble, it's uh, I have a different spirit of of um, of work, uh, which means that uh, for me. Uh, it's more important to try to 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 find solution directly in the vineyard than uh, in the winemaking process. Um, it's uh, of course I'm always focused on of the quality of 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 the berries, uh, and it's it's really really important for me to be able to um, uh, how to say that uh, um, to catch the fruits. Uh, and the, the expression of, uh, of the vintage. Uh, so I'm always trying to, to work with natural yeast. Um, in, uh, in, the, in the winery, for me, it's really, really important for the Cabernet Franc to arrive uh, in a wool cluster with berries that have no damage, no crush, no nothing. So, uh, finally, when um, the, the, the clusters arrive uh, on top of the winery, uh, on top of a sorting table, distamer, uh, and then I have some um, small trailers to to carry the berries directly on top of each uh, of each um, uh, vat. Uh, for me, Cabernet Franc have. Uh, Really enough uh, green flavors, uh, and I'm 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 trying since two vintages to do very very small um, vats of uh, wood clusters, but that's for me it's um, too homogenic, uh, and you 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 need absolutely ripe uh, stems, which is um for me it's really dangerous to 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 play too much with that with the cabernet franc uh but it's true that uh i, I am more interested to work with wool berries than with uh, crushed berries so wool berries but this time uh and after uh for the acidity um i'm since a few vintages, I, I were afraid to see that uh, the acidity um, uh, fall down. But uh, to be honest, uh, because you can see the, the, the mother rock, uh, you always have some freshness in that kind of soil, uh, always some moisturing. And to be honest, I have no, no trouble with uh, with acidity, even with a big, big um, uh, forecast during summertime. 
Um, right now, I never have to use any um, acid for, for my wines. Um, you know that Loire Valley is quite uh, north in France. If we start to use uh, acid here, uh, you are in trouble. <laughs> Um, and also after, um, so really in, um, in, the, in, uh, in the winery, I'm always trying not to use any product. Uh, the, the lower I can use um, is the better. Um, so that means that we have also, a, a, I have a big, big reflection uh, about our, uh, uh, how to use uh, sulfites adding sulfites or not. Uh, so right now, I, I arrived to, um, to, to bottle, uh, most, most of my cuvées are bottled between 30 milligram to 40 milligram uh, per liter of um, total sulfite, which is um, 30 to 40 total is quite low. Uh, and three is about uh, 15 to 20 uh, maximum just before the bottling. So most of my wines are aged uh, in barrel or in foraz. Uh, but uh, um, for example, uh, 2019 Pierre de Tuf here, uh, never seen any sulfites. Uh, as the Cabernet Franc also have a a very huge structure of tannins that protect uh, quite well the wine. Uh, also, it's a reductive, a quite reductive uh, grape flavor, uh, grape uh, variety, uh, Cabernet Franc. So it's um, it's also uh, not so important to 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 protect from oxidation uh, like a Pinot Noir or Gamay. Um, so uh, I'm always doing um, aging in barrel or, or infra with um, quite a lot of lees. Uh, I'm not racking it uh, so often as I don't want to, to oxidize too much. Um, the aging for me is really uh, uh, an important tool of to open the wine, to open the flavors, uh, to, to, to mellow the tannins. Uh, but it, I don't want that the aging um, is something to add flavors of oak or things like that. So that's why we are using uh, big barrels of, uh, this is 500 liter barrels of uh, French oak, of course. Um, And uh, uh, depend of vintages, but sometimes we are doing uh, malolactic in barrels or uh, or in vat. It depends of um, of the fermentation and uh, and the forecast outside. Great, thanks. Is that? Uh, yeah. Yeah, great answer. Yeah, that's perfect. Thanks, uh, Jerome. Thank you. Excellent. I think there's no more questions at the moment, Jim, so I'm sure we're, is that a yeah, I, to wrap up? Yep, yeah, let's, <coughs> Jerome, merci beaucoup. Um, fascinate, fascinating seminar, uh, really interesting. And <coughs> thank you so much for giving up your, up your time. Um, I know it's been, May, May is always busy for the minerals, but it's particularly busy, April, May, particularly busy this year because things have been growing so fast. And thank you so much for giving up your, your time and organizing this, which was, let's say, fascinating. And uh, I shall look forward to tasting uh, not just 19, but also 20 and visiting you during the, the harvest. Thanks, thanks again. Santé, Andrea. Jim. <laughs>